offensive by Iraqi forces and what it means for the fight against ISIL. We're joined by Stephen Miles. He's advocacy director for Win Without War. It's an organization here in Washington which promotes national security strategies. We've had you on the broadcast a lot uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. To Crete, hometown of Saddam Hussein, the importance of this battle, would you say? Well, it's, it's unquestionably a significant battle, and I think we have a lot of questions about what's going to be the outcome. You know, I think as we just heard, there's a large number of different forces involved in this fight, not just the Iraqi military, but Shia militias. Where we've seen these Shia militias involved before, there's often been bloodletting, there's often been sectarian violence. This is one of the battles where we're going into a true Sunni-held region. And the question remains, what's going to happen if ISIS is routed from here? Which side are Sunni tribal leaders or Sunni militias that aren't necessarily ISIS, but have no love lost for the government? On which side of this battle are they going to fight? And we're going to find out a lot about the future in the next Stephen, couple of days. Stephen, you've been on this broadcast a lot, and you always make the distinction. There are millions of Sunnis, right. and ISIS is like 20, 30, 40,000, whatever the number yeah. is. But the difference, the disparity is huge. That's and right. it's always been with you talking to you. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a battle for the hearts and minds of the it Sunnis. Is. Um, have you seen any headway there? It, there's been some concern. There's been, there's been every, every time it seems like we take two steps forward, we take two steps back, and so it doesn't seem like we're making much progress. Um, I think it's hard when you're having these sectarian forces like these Shia militias. They've been involved in decades of fighting here. Um, you have the forces like ISIS that are consciously trying to inflame Sunni tensions. You know, General Soleimani with the Quds Force, the Iranian Quds Force, is, is actively involved in this fight from what we hear. We can be sure that ISIS is going to be reminding Sunni fighters in this region that Soleimani was involved in the Iran-Iraq war, which saw hundreds of thousands of casualties for Iraqis. This goes back decades. Um, it's going to take a lot of national reconciliation, and the question remains, is there the capacity for that? We haven't seen much to be hopeful about so far. Hopefully that will change, but there's reason to be skeptical. Yeah, there's an interesting uh, piece in Now Monitor by Aaron Balshin and, and Ben Decker talking about a resistance group within mm -hmm. Mosul called the Free Officers Movement, where they've actually assassinated a couple of the top leaders mm -hmm. uh, of ISIS in Mosul. Uh, and then, of course, we've seen gains yeah. with Kobani. We see, it seems like the, the playing field's changing. I mean, is this a, just a perception, or is it reality, and what do you make of it? Well, I think one thing, you always have to be skeptical a little bit when you're hearing stories out of regions that have very limited uh, information flow. So we can't be 100% sure what's going on in, say, Raqqa or in Mosul, because we know we're not getting a full picture of of what's coming out, and frequently what's coming out is being used by people who have agendas for the broader fight. So you always have to treat these, these things with a bit of skepticism. But the broader contours of the conflict, they haven't dramatically changed. This is the third uh, Iraqi offensive to try to take to Crete. They may, be, uh, they may make progress, they may not. Kobani, again, there was some progress there from the, from the Kurdish perspective. They were able to repel the ISIS advance. But the main thrust of where ISIS today is is broadly where they were before, which is broadly the Sunni-dominated, the Sunni-majority areas of Iraq and Syria. This conflict has been going on for decades. It's not likely to change its core problem until we begin to address those core problems. So while we're going to see changes on the battlefield, and perhaps we'll see one in Tikrit, we're not going to see a dramatic change to the underlying conflict anytime soon. The, the latest Atlantic has this piece, What Does ISIS Want? And, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to quote from it briefly. It says, properly contained, the Islamic State is likely to be its own undoing. The country is uh, no country is its ally, and its ideology ensures that it will remain the case. The land it controls, while expansive, which mm -hmm. is, I think is what you talked about, is mostly uninhabited and poor. Mm -hmm. Is that a correct assessment? I mean, it's still going to take a long time, though, even if that is the case, correct? It's going to take a long time, and there's lots of things that there's lots of things at play. There's been some articles talking about uh, potential cash flow problems, financial shortfalls for for the Islamic State in their regions that they control. Some of the changes they've lost some of the oil revenue they were depending on. These are long-term crises. And one of the things we have to be clear about is that it's not just ISIS. It's not just one group and the fate of that group. Again, there's multiple mi militias. There's over 1,500 known fighting groups in Syria alone before you bring in Iraq. So the, the, the contours are going to change, unquestionably. But the underlying conflict, frankly, part of the conflict that was unleashed by 2003, by our invasion in Iraq and the bloodletting along sectarian divides that came after that, it's been in place for a while, and it's going to take a while to bring some, uh, bring some calm and bring yeah. some peace. Stitching it back together is going to take a while. Stephen Miles, always a delight having you on the broadcast. Thanks for coming in.